in today's show. We're looking ahead to week 13 in the NBA. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Let's look ahead to week 13. Hopefully, we are past the point of game postponements. Fingers crossed. So let's talk about what's going on for the week coming up. <clears throat> a light week, in fact. 11 teams are playing four games. 18 teams are playing three games. And just the Lakers with the two games. So <clears throat> a two-game week is not ideal. But when the majority of teams are playing three games, the impact isn't quite as bad. So it's not great, especially if you've been riding the performances of LeBron. It's not great to only get two games out of him. But um, the fact that it is on a week where basically two-thirds of the league are only playing three games, it's only a one-game differential where it could have been a week where there was 18 teams, 19 teams playing four games, and then that's a real kick in the ass to have a week with a a two-game player. So the 11 teams that play four, we've got the Kings, the Nets, the Sixers, the Cavs, the Warriors, the Spurs, the Rockets, the Nuggets, the Pistons, the Bulls, and the Celtics. So those teams, those 11 teams, they've got the real advantage this week because they're in the minority playing the four games. And it's, it's not like everyone's playing four. So there is going to be, when you're looking at setting weekly lineups for the week, um, some bad players who are playing four games that get the nod over average players playing three or guys on the Lakers playing two. That's just how it's going to work when the schedule is set up this way, a little bit lighter. And what that does bring us then into is looking at how it plays out for the week. And I think with the amount of players that are injured, the amount of guys in COVID protocols who will be coming out of them this week, a lot of them, um, I think we should be expanding the criteria. Normally, a streaming day to me is nine games or fewer. At the moment, I'm going to expand it out to 10 games or fewer because when you have so many guys in or out of your, sorry, out of your team, it does mean that you won't have a full active roster most days. Now, if you've got a 12-game day or an 11-game, it does get harder. But on a 10, I reckon we're going to expand that criteria out. So this week, we can stream every day. We've got seven games on Monday. We've got six on Tuesday, nine on Wednesday, five on Thursday, nine on Friday, 10 on Saturday, and then we finish up with four on Sunday, I guess, uh, coinciding with the NFL playoffs, a uh, smaller day on Sunday there. But the only day that's marginally um, an issue is maybe that Saturday with the 10 games on, and you may not have streaming ability on that day. But I reckon most people will just again, given the amount of people who are um, sitting out of games at the moment. So we're talking about everyday streaming here. So there's no real, you've got to target this team because their quality games look great. We're targeting those 11, those 11 uh, four game teams. Kings, Nets, Sixers, Cavs, Warriors, Spurs, Rockets, Nuggets, Pistons, Bulls, Celtics. We're targeting those teams because we're going to be able to stream them in four times for the week and get a little bit of extra value out of them. So if you are looking to preserve your ads for the week, you're adding a player from one of those 11 teams, especially the ones that play uh, maybe not on the Saturday, which is a a benefit. Someone like the Sacramento Kings, for example, they're a four-game team that doesn't play on the Saturday. The Warriors are as well. The Rockets are as well. The Pistons are also. So those teams who play the four games and it's not on the Saturday, where you're going to have a better chance of using them uh, in all four games. Yeah, that's There's something there. And, and the Kings do have some fringy sort of players like a Marvin Bagley, your Damian Jones, Harrison Barnes, who's turning into a fringe player at the moment. Um, there is uh, value in grabbing those guys and, and the Warriors, maybe someone did drop Jordan Poole or Gary Payton. We don't know what Poole's going to do when Clay returns tomorrow. Um, yeah, but there is some value in getting the four games out of them for this week. In terms of how the back-to-backs look, um, <clears throat> basically until the Friday-Saturday combo, there's very few teams with the back-to-backs. Monday, Tuesday, we're looking just at Detroit. 
Tuesday, Wednesday, it's Chicago and the Wizards. Wednesday, Thursday, it's Brooklyn. Thursday, Friday, it's the Warriors and the Grizzlies. And then you've got 10 teams that have the back-to-back on the Friday-Saturday combo. The Cavs, the Sixers, the Spurs, the Bulls, the Celtics, the Mavs, the Heat, the Raptors, the Magic, and the Hawks. Chicago, the only team this week with two back-to-backs. They play the Tuesday-Wednesday back-to-back. They play the Friday-Saturday back-to-back. I don't think there's anyone there we need to particularly be too worried about in terms of resting. Um, but they do have the two back-to-backs. And then only one team with the end of week, weekend back-to-back. That's the Nuggets on the Saturday and Sunday. So we're going to talk about that in a second, about how we can try and get the best into our team for this week. But there is um, a yeah, much, much smaller amount of back-to-backs this week than there have been in other weeks. And there are plenty of teams that don't have any. The Hornets, the Suns, Knicks, Clippers, Bucks, Jazz... Um, Pelicans, Wolves, Thunder, Pacers, Lakers don't have any back-to-backs this week. Before I tell you about how we um, attack our streaming for this week, I'm going to tell you about Built Bar because it's a new year. It is time for you to get yourself off of the sugary candy bars and get yourself something healthy. We're all looking to do something, gain weight. Not, no, we're actually, we're not looking to gain We're looking to lose weight, we're looking to gain strength. Pack those muscles on. And instead of having those sugary treats, why don't you kill two birds with one stone and get a built Bar? It's high in protein. It's high in taste. But it's low in fat. It's low in carbs. It's low in sugar. And it's low in calories. So it's replacing your treats, but it's also providing you that protein to help get yourself in gear for 2022. Go to built.com. Get yourself boxes of built Bar. Chuck out all of those unhealthy treats you've got at home and use the promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5. That will get you 15% off your boxes of built Bar, whatever your favorite flavor. There are so many great ones there. They're all, they're all absolute bangers. So make sure you are grabbing those boxes. Go to built.com, use the code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5. Built Bar is built different. Let's look at a streaming plan. For the week now, um, again, there's plenty of ways you can do this where we're looking at the week, thinking that we can stream every day. Um, but this is how I would uh, approach it. <clears throat> On Monday, I would add a Pistons player. Maybe that's Hamadou Diallo, who's been dropped. If Isaiah Stewart's available. Maybe we stream in a Trey Lyles, Saban Lee, um, Josh Jackson, perhaps. We add a, a Pistons player for the Monday-Tuesday combo. This is, using, this is with a, a situation where we've got four ads and we're streaming one roster spot through. Then we drop that player after Tuesday's game, and then we add a Brooklyn Nets player for Wednesday, Nick Claxton, who should be on a roster anyway. Maybe it's LaMarcus Aldridge, Paddy Mills. Um, maybe we go to Bembry. Maybe we're in deeper leagues. We go with uh, the bloke who started the last two games, amazingly, David Duke. Why should I change? He's the one who sucks. Um, and stream those guys in. And then on Friday, we've got a huge selection of players that we can stream in with the 10 different teams playing the back-to-back. So we just find a good option on those days, someone that we really like. Now that will change as the week goes on, as players become injured and roles increase for other players. There's no point in me going massively into detail on that. When I do the what to watch for for Friday show, you'll see the back-to-back streams for the Friday, Saturday. That will give you a better idea of which players are going to have value um, or have, have the most value on that day given the current situation um, there. So I think that is going to be worth, worth. It's a, it's a, or I think all shows are worth tuning into, but that's going to be one that does have an increase in value um, there as we try to stream in. And then we drop that player. And then on Sunday, we just add whatever we need. We're not looking for back-to-backs. We're looking for one player to play on the Sunday. There's only four games on. We're looking for the right player to attack the right category at the right time. So we've gotten, from those three ads, we've gotten six games to start the week. And then we get our seventh extra ad through that roster spot. And again, it's why we're in streaming so important. We've used one roster spot and we've got seven games out of it. Whereas if it's a player that's playing there, say like the vast majority of teams playing three games this week, three games versus seven, doesn't matter how good that guy is. If he's your worst player, three games versus seven games, it's a no-brainer. that You've got to use that roster spot to stream blokes in. Let's look at more stuff on the schedule. The following teams don't have any games until Wednesday. That's the Mavs, the Heat, the Magic, the Hawks, and the Lakers. They do not play until Wednesday. So if you do have some fringe players on those teams, Tim Hardaway, a name that springs to mind. We'll see what happens with Caleb Martin and Max Struess. Um, for the Magic, yeah, few, fewer names there, but maybe it turns into be a Gary Harris or a Terrence Ross or someone like that. Um, you can drop them. They don't play for the first two days. And then at the back end of things, these teams don't play at all on the weekend. The Hornets, the Grizzlies, and the Pacers. So maybe a Brandon Clark or a Tyus Jones is a drop. Kelly Oubre, Cody Martin. 
um, for the paces, it's harder to find those guys there. But, mate, Chris Duarte, he should have returned, but is he going to be worth holding across that weekend if there's no value there? If we're looking at weekly changes leagues, remember this does not apply. If you set your lineup every single day, this segment of the show does not apply to you. I'm not telling you to sit or add players based on a league where you change your lineups daily. Must must put that out there every time because without fail, someone will ask me that question. Why is he telling me to sit LeBron James? Because it's a weekly league. But I'm not telling you to sit LeBron. We'll get to that in a second. Players you can add for the week. Really, I, I've been saying this for a while now, ever since the Ricky Rubio inju- injury that Chetty Osmond's the guy to add. We saw that yesterday in his first game back from COVID protocols. I think he's an ad regardless, but the Cavs play four games this week. I think it's a pretty straightforward one. You add him, you start him this week. Really good value. Damian Jones, yes, Rashawn Holmes will probably be back. And maybe there is a risk. I'm, I'm, I'm iffy on this one. Maybe there is a risk that uh, Alex Len takes back the, start, the backup center role. That is a possibility. But the Kings play four games. They don't play on the Saturday as well, which doesn't matter for weekly leagues. But if he plays four games, plays 18 minutes a night, 20 minutes a night, 80 minutes for the week, there's some value in that. That's like a 25-minute-a-night guy who plays three games. There is real good value in that. So Damian Jones, an option. Jermichael Green has taken over from Jeff Green in Denver as the starting four. I don't know whether that continues, but maybe there's value there with the four games for the Nuggets. And then, like the Kings again, Marvin Bagley. Don't think he's a good player. Don't think he's a great fantasy player. But when the minority of teams are playing four, and he plays for one of those teams that's playing four, and he might play 27 minutes. He might get you 11 rebounds a game. He might get you 45 rebounds for the week. Yeah, there's, there's something there. And the same goes for Lonnie Walker. The Spurs are dealing with COVID issues, absences to Calden and Derek White and Devin Vassell. So Walker, whose first game back from COVID protocols, didn't do much, but maybe that ramps up and there could be some value in using him in this situation. Now, if you're in category leagues, we're looking at players that we can sit. I would sit every single Lakers player on my roster apart from LeBron. Fucking goat outside. It's just a goat. No, it's a fucking goat. Yeah, I would be um, I would be sitting LeBron. Um, sorry, I'd be sitting everyone apart from LeBron. So that includes Malik Monk, who's on a heater at the moment. Uh, obviously, a Russell Westbrook in a category league is a pretty easy decision to go and um, sit him for the week. There's not many other guys. Kamalo Anthony, Taylor Horton Tucker. If you've got him, Avery Bradley. These guys, I think, are pretty clear sits. Um, Bogdan Bogdanovich. Cameron Johnson, we don't know what they're going to do with Jay Crowder, but only three games worth a sit. Ubre, RJ Barrett, Tim Hardaway, and of course, Clay Thompson. Limited minutes for Clay. Uh, four games for the week, but they do have a back to back in there, the Warriors, which is the Thursday, Friday. So Clay's only going to play three, and he probably only tallies 60 to 65 minutes for the week, would be my guess there. But I'm not guessing about what the best place is for all your sporting betting action because it's Bet Online pretty clearly. And Bet Online would like to wish you a happy new betting year as they continue towards the playoffs. BetOnline is the number one spot for all sports wagering action for 2022. It's a new year, and with that comes a new updated desktop site and a new mobile website where you can sign up. And you can use our promo code Locked On to get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. From basketball to football, the NHL, boxing, UFC, or right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait and take advantage of all of the great offers available for 2022. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports Bet online is where the game starts. Let's go to points leagues now and players that we can add to set into our weekly lineups for the week. We're looking at the Discman Chad. Ch- Ch- I can't speak anymore. The Discman CD Osman. Um, yeah, Osman, good ad. Nicky Claxton still available in over fifty percent of leagues. He's a great ad. Marvin Bagley we spoke about already. Um, Monty Morris is a good ad at fifty percent rostered on Yahoo. Lonnie Walker as we talked about as well. And then for points leagues. In terms of players that we can sit, a little bit different. I'm sitting all Lakers, except this time, not including Russ. Two games for Russ in a points league is good enough to start for the week. Him and LeBron are guys we can start. I would sit Derek White, returning from COVID protocols, and all those other Spurs guys, Keldon and Vassell, obviously. Uh, Kelly Oubre, Tim Hardaway, Evan Fournier, uh, Bobby Covington, and of course, Clay Thompson. Guys, that will do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. If you are on YouTube, give it a thumbs up and leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.